So once again, here are we are back again at the Histocon line, the first day of our international um, workshop or, or international conference, which which is in this year mainly online or only online. And uh, today we have another talk. So we had already this opening this morning and in the afternoon, it's, uh, right now, we have this very interesting talking and talk and um, I will uh, hand over to my colleague. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you see all the audience? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Maybe introduce yourself and introduce the, the panel and uh, I will hand over to you and uh, the interesting talking this afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel. My name is Jakob and I uh, also give you a warm welcome, everybody out there. It's a little bit strange for us uh, to, to talk just into the computer and see only three people, our uh, director, Daniel, and then uh, Barbara Jelin and Toby Dahmen. Um, I'm so glad that you are here. Um, we talk now about um, the title is Representation of War and Holocaust in Comics. So um, what you can expect is not only a talk, definitely not, but also a presentation. Um, many people are not very familiar with, with comic readings, with comic uh, events, and uh, we are very glad that we can at least show you a little bit how it can be to make a presentation with comics. Much more, uh, I'm happy because I have these wonderful uh, artists here uh, and I like to uh, introduce uh, Barbara Jedin. She's from Munich and she's, uh, yeah, let me say one of the most famous uh, comic artists in Germany and published a lot of really brilliant books like uh, Gift or, or Ilmina, we will talk about Ilmina or uh, the uh, life of Hannah Maron and much more. She won the uh, Max and Moritz Prize a few years ago for the best uh, comic artist in Germany. This is the most important prize. On the other, not on the other side, I don't know uh, where exactly he is uh, located right now in the on the screen, but I know he is in Utrecht, but uh, this is Toby Dahmen, and he's he's a German, but he is in Utrecht. Uh, you celebrated three days ago the Day of Liberation in Holland. Is it strange for a German citizen to do it in Holland still? No, no. Actually, it's it's one of my favorite celebrations here. To be mm -hmm. honest, it's uh, it's they do this with a uh, with a with a great grace, mm -hmm. and I always enjoy that, especially because it's. Uh, has two sides, the morning and the the party afterwards. Okay, so there is a party afterwards. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Maybe to uh, Toby hasn't uh, published so many comic books yet as uh, uh, Barbara, but the last one, um, Make a Big Noise and Buzz, it was Farad Mott, an autobiographical um, novel, very strong and uh, only 500 pages uh, thick. Um, and um, these both artists uh, have one thing in common. They work at this very moment on uh, graphic novels uh, about the war and about the Holocaust and about, uh, yeah, especially the Second World War. Um, before we, uh, we start with the talk and the presentation, I give you a short overview of what, what our plan is. Uh, Daniel urged us to, to not exceed uh, the, the one hour border uh, and we hope we can manage it but it will be hard. Um, we have uh, uh, we focus on presentations. Um, Toby will start to give a, a short sneak uh, in his uh, recent work and then we discuss that and then we combine it with a discussion about the work of Barbara and she will also show uh, very exclusively uh, work uh, she's working on right now. Uh, and then we also have times for your questions. Um, Daniel uh, is so nice to, to collect them. We don't see the, the, YouTube, uh, uh, the YouTube screen and uh, see if you uh, are angry or happy, but please feel welcome to ask questions and we try to answer it. 
Um, and in the end, uh, because we think it's still not common to uh, to talk about comics in the relation of serious topics like war and Holocaust, we also like to give you a few uh, hints and recommendations concerning comics about war. Okay, um, bef before we start, I'd I like to ask uh, a question to both of you. When you think back uh, now, was... Uh, how was war remembered in your family or at your school when you're a student or a young girl or a young boy? Who should start? Barbara, okay, 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 so hello everyone. Um, well, I remember that in my school i mean in the from from ninth class upwards uh we had a very solid and good um history uh lessons history classes and we learned a lot about the war and the holocaust and um this went on until yeah end of school it uh i, I think it was very uh, it was very good uh while on the other side in my family um my father, he was he he was already uh, a child in the war, and he he told sometimes something, little glimpses about being hu very hungry, um, also about the post-war ye years a little how hard school was for him. I mean, and in the in this uh, in this uh, poor society, uh, but actually not much more. And so for me, there was a gap in between what uh, my what, what I learned in school and what my my parents told about, and also what my grandparents told about. Um, and I found it. I remember that I I had to prepare a um, an referat, a, a, a little lecture for the class when I was around 15 or so about the uh, Nuremberg processes, Nuremberg processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked my father if he remembered them. Mm -hmm. And he said not at all. So mm -hmm. he learned it only afterwards, but he mm -hmm. didn't, didn't didn't remember it at all that it was something he knew at this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Toby, I uh, the impact of war was uh, I I've learned about that quite early from early age because one of my uncles, the brother of my father, was. Uh, missing in the war, so there was always this mystery about this man that what got lost, and even for a child that was quite impressive, and uh, maybe he would come back one day, things like that, and um, so and there were always stories about war going on in our family, and I heard them from an early age, um, so that. Uh, and I always like to hear about them. And later on, in, uh, um, in although my grandparents didn't tell anything about it, mm. but uh, my father was quite open, uh, mm -hmm. and and my mother as well. Uh, later in school, it was like yeah, just like uh, like Barbara said, I still remember uh, um, some sort of uh, concept that I had to do as well. In history class, uh, that was about uh, concentration camps, and I had the same thing. I was mm. asking um, that, and shortly afterwards, uh, in study days, I, I watched Schindler's List, and mm. I was quite, quite shocked about it all. And I asked my mother again, "You have, you, you must have known anything about this?" Mm. So there was a said, yeah, there, mm. there was an, an atmosphere that that I that I felt. But not much more. So yeah. I knew, you know, it's not everything was uh, in the open. So th this is an important question also concerning your work because uh, when I get it right, there was an atmosphere, but it was not very detailed. And then uh, the exactly. both of you uh, doing comics about that. Uh, Elmina, in, in when was it published? Five years ago, six years ago? Uh, yes, five yeah. years ago. Um, and uh, Columbus Straße, you will talk about that right now. In both stories, that is really interesting, starting with a box, with a box uh, in the attic or in the cellar. I don't know exactly, a box with letters. So maybe um, we start with a presentation of, uh, of Toby and hope it will okay. work because uh, there is one thing I have to say before that. 
uh, it is never easy for an artist to, to let his piece of art go, to release it and give it to public. Much more if this uh, piece of art isn't ready yet. So uh, what we uh, see now are really very uh, first glimpses, first sneaks, uh, sketches, uh, which are not finished yet. And I'm very, very happy that you uh, are bold enough and, and, and confidential enough to present that uh, in public right now. So what you see now is are maybe pictures you see for the first time and maybe for the last time because they will uh, uh, um, find or yeah uh, over publishing house has a word to say about as well yeah exactly yeah. okay it's it's up to you okay so, um, I'm gonna share my screen now hope it works all yeah and then here we go. Uh, firstly, I wanted to say what was my motivation during this project, and um, and as I told earlier, that it was that there were always these fascinating stories that were going around in my family. They were always in the back of my head. I, I, I yeah, I always had the feeling that I had to do something with this. Um, but the incident that put things in motion was the death of my father. Actually, I realized that all the stories he told me about his childhood in the war would die with him actually, if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't pass them on or something, someone else, but uh, as me as a storyteller, I felt uh, obliged to do so. So after his death, I started digging through his stuff and I found this very old box originally for, meant for underwear. And in there were postcards and letters from World War I and World War II. I collected everything I found started digging deeper and and I realized it was a lot letters newspapers documents like uh, vitas or uh, diaries and so many 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 photos these are my grandparents from my father's side and this is my father to the right and uh, his brothers and his sister and later on I decided to put the story of my mother in there as well. That's her on the on the right and her mother and her brother. With the information of the letters and the diaries and documents, uh, for example, conscription orders or testimony or a testimony to the Allies after the war, I constructed uh, a timeline and combined these events that happened within my family with the uh, historical events of the 30s and 40s. And with this structure that I made firstly, uh, I wrote a story and a storyboard for the graphic novel. And of course, of course, I did the uh, character design for the main protagonists. I think it's very important to integrate the voices of my family into the story. So I use a lot of original quotes from their letters from interviews that I luckily did with my parents and also insert original documents into the artwork, like this uh, newspaper that my uh, granddad kept for some reason. The same goes for buildings. I consider them witnesses of these dark days too. This is the Kolumbusstrasse building where main, uh, the events take place mostly. And this is how it appears on a page then. Uh, yeah, yeah, they have this saying, if, if words could speak. So that's, that's the thing that I think is important. The words are the witnesses too. And that's also a reason because that I uh, traveled with my mom to the places of her childhood. But maybe it's time to read a bit from uh, a page, from a few pages from the book. Um, we are in Düsseldorf, and my granddad's granddad was a lawyer, a true Catholic, and because of that, he was considered a possible opponent of the regime. Düsseldorf, 1936.
Heil Hitler, Herr Kollege. Go put some effort into it, Karl. One day you get in trouble that way. Mm. Although looking at your latest victories, they'll knock at your door pretty soon anyway. What are you hinting at, Erich? That recently I'm more concerned with criminal defense because I'm losing all my old clients? You mean your staunchly Catholic friends? Well, you can easily imagine that the Führer doesn't feel too happy about you being more loyal to your lord than to him. You mean he's jealous? Watch out what you're saying, Carl. Seriously. It occurred to people for a long time that you delight in representing opponents of the movement. If you allude to Sister Romualda of the Liebfrauenkirche, she merely took a stand to relieve the distress of her foster links. I'm still surprised that lady was acquitted. Had she not proved her beneficence to, so impressively by witnesses, she'd well ended up in prison as public enemy. Just like the persecution had called for. Initially, she was charged for violation of the Treachery Act, by the way. You have to admit that your little sister has quite some guts insulting the national youth leader von Schirach and Reichleiter Rosenberg in one sentence. And that with the courtroom filled to the brim with this R and SS. Of course, they all kept your face in mind. We did win, nevertheless. <clears throat> Then let's see how things turn out today. Let me ask you uh, two questions on that first passage you present to us. The, the first one is, um, um, on this uh, uh, section you showed, you showed us um, architecture plays a main role. Why is that? I think it's uh, it contributes to the to the power levels in in the in the regime. It um, it was mostly these buildings were built before, but but uh, the Nazis were were eager to demonstrate power power and uh, to demonstrate who who is in charge, uh, and that that the people don't have that much of a say. Mm. So uh, I wanted to, um, and with that, I, I, um, yeah, yeah. So I, it's, I, yeah. It's not only only atmosphere. It also is a, a manifestation of power. And, exactly, uh, and, yeah. and in, 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 in the in the in the jurisdiction, in the end of in, in the in the courtroom, you see the, where the power as well is. Mm. You know, there's there's this big uh, swastika. That uh, everything is under, mm. under, under that one. The second question, and, it, and it's also uh, uh, Barbara, feel welcome to uh, also to answer on that because I think you have the same uh, question. We we see two people speak. It's it's your grandfather speaking with a colleague, uh, and uh, I'm quite sure this is uh, in a way fiction because you didn't know exactly how the dialogue was. No, But, exactly. Uh, Okay, how do you deal with that? Uh, how do you uh, bring out these dialogues, uh, and and what what is necessary to do it in a in a proper way, in your uh, opinion? I think the uh, the most important thing is that that there has to be some information in it, and this information I have from the doc documents of my grandfather. The next thing is uh, to 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 write. Write the dialogue that that could yeah that's that's what what I try to to make it make it look real. But on the other hand, it has to it has in a in a few pictures it has to uh, describe the situation and also describe the the characters, their position. Um, the one is one is uh, leaning against uh, the regime. The, the other one is is uh, is more careful. These are all the information that I have to put in a in a in a, in a few speech bubbles. Mm. So that's always um, a consideration: how much I can put in there, and what would be too 
too much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I would agree. This is, I think writing dialogues is very interesting because in comics we don't have so much space and on the other hand it should, it should of course feel uh, uh, lively, uh, uh, authentically and so and I of course I have to base it on research so I do the research but what I can research are mostly written documents sometimes film documents so I can read novels or uh, uh, test uh, witness uh, um, Zeitzeugenberichte witness mm -hmm. testimonies uh, contemporary uh, uh, testimonies and so I can, it's a little bit like a puzzle. I can put several pieces into it. And then I have, of course, meet a, a uh, language which, which fits into that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and it's also uh, it's kind of, process, it's a process to try it and, and um, to try if it works. Yeah. And to set, set the right tone, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But what Barbara says is very important to to also uh, try to find a language th that fits to a certain time, mm -hmm. and uh, that's 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 a special talent if you can do this. But uh, when you read a lot of letters, then you realize that language was very different different than to mm. the language and today. Yeah, to today. The next scene uh, you will uh, display is uh, nearly without any dialogues, and it shows another uh, um, uh, another how should I say skill of of, of comics. Um, that's uh, one reason I find it so interesting. But uh, the other is that we will find a kind of uh, parallel scene in the work of Barbara. Okay. So, um. Yeah, I'm going to show you this other scene of the books. I just finished it this week, so it's still very fresh. 9th November I can still remember the sound of the broken glass under my shoes. For this, I have a little work in progress of these pages. I don't know if you want to see this already, but um, on the left, you see the rough sketches that lead to the final pages on the right. Maybe it's helpful um, just to say a few words about the uh, 9th of November, because we have an international audience here. Very, very true, yeah. Uh, shall I do that? Or this, this was yeah, the uh, uh, this was the pogrom night, uh, and it was a very uh, crucial day for for uh, for this whole period because in that night, uh, as it was said, all the synagogues burned in all the uh, Jewish shops and uh, and houses uh, will be uh, uh, looted and uh, destroyed, and there was a big bus, and uh, it was kind of um, the mob goes to the street and uh, anti-Semitism was on his uh, peak at that very moment. And um, of course, uh, the question is, um, 
and this is a question uh, about all uh, history, historical education or history education, um, how much people from today understand that still. In, in, your, in your passage, for example, or in your comic, um, Toby, you, you showed uh, uh, the face of, the, of your grandmother, I guess. Yeah. And then you see the aches, and then you see a closed curtain. And for our generation, everything is clear at that moment. Uh, how, how do you deal with that notion uh, if everything is understandable or not? And this question, of course, also goes to uh, uh, Barbara, he, which, uh, who will show us uh, her version of this uh, very day. I think um, I, I, uh, when writing this, uh, um, I think I, I, I uh, consider that that readers have heard about this, um, mm -hmm. that yeah. that these the events that I show that trigger a collective memory, um, and I, I put this this. Uh, but uh, but there are people who st are still trying to to to. Uh, Make make these events less important than they are. Mm -hmm. Let's put it like that. And um, and I still and I think it's very important uh, that that the, that the uh, memories of people uh, is a, some some sort of a confession that that this that this happened. And the more stories we tell, the more we see these uh, these stories from different different views the the um, the more real it is and uh, with this we see how this these things uh, came to happen it was one of many steps and we have to we have to remember them to uh, to 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 prevent this from happening again mm -hmm. You de you decide on this sequence not to show the perpetrators, but uh, uh, to show to show your family or show the people in the in the tramway. Why did you do that? As, uh, the the main what you hear what you heard a lot after the war from German people that they said we didn't know we didn't know how bad it was, and uh, for that I can go a little further to. Um, to the making of this page, and um, I, re I read a book that the, the Memorial House in, in Düsseldorf made uh, about the, the events that took place that one night and the next day that people forget that mm -hmm. it they continued to, uh, during the next day. And they, uh, they categorized, categorized the, the, all the events that took place within Düsseldorf, and it's a really big book so uh, it's almost impossible that you uh, that you cannot uh, cannot would have not witnessed this and that's this is what I'm showing that everybody uh, saw this my father told me that he uh, remembered the splinters under his feet mm -hmm. but um, but I, sh I show all th yeah mm -hmm. two generations and and the people on the street and um, I had this this drawing that I had to do uh, an extra drawing to to put it in, into this page that was uh, inspired by a photo that that is from that book I mentioned. And this uh, you see that's that's a picture that was actually in the newspaper. So it was also news. Nobody would put it under cover. They would say this is the the, the anger. Of the German people against the Jews because there was there had been a murder taking place in Paris, and um, so the the it was real it was not just a mob going around it was orchestrated this was uh, direct people di were directed to do so, so this is this is what I want to tell tell it was not just something that ha that happened it was everywhere. Thank you so much, Toby. Um, 
Uh, we here in uh, the Histocon talk about comics and war. Uh, Daniel uh, told me that I have to mention it uh, from time to time. And um, Barbara, uh, is it possible that we now switch to um, to your um, part from Elena, yes. which uh, deals also with this uh, Reichspogromnacht, um, and it is a very fundamental scene for the whole book. Maybe you can tell just a little bit about that, if possible. And then yes. we, we have the chance to compare it, uh, not uh, which is better, of course, but uh, which question comes up, which question occurs by thinking about how to show the situation. Yes. Um, so I also show uh, a scene which takes place on the night to, night to the uh, 9th of November, Uh, of the 9th of November, and um, what Toby just uh, said resonated a lot with my own experience with the research material. So, uh, but well, I, I will show the little scene and then we c I can talk about it afterwards. So this is Amina, my main character. And it's also a silent scene. Gregor. And she sees on the other side of the street that Jew the Jewish shop is dis gets destroyed, is destroyed by SA people. Come on, move. And there, Yamina st stays silent, but then there comes a voice from the street. Louis, he, but he didn't do anything. Isn't there anyone awake? Why doesn't anyone help? And now we jump a little bit to another scene, but it's only the next day. And where we follow Amina, who is crossing the streets, um, where we see the humiliation of the Jewish um, people here, And we see also the German people, the normal German uh, Bürger and what their reactions are. And this is something I wanted to research also within the book of Ermina to see what did they do or actually what did they not do. They did not help to the victims. They did not... Uh, They, they, they did not stand up against this injustice. And uh, this is one of the, my main images here. You see uh, the burning synagogue in Berlin. It was the day after the night of 9th of November. And uh, so it's also showing that these uh, November pogroms, they didn't have take place only in one night, but they kept on, they went on over the next two or three days visible for everyone who was there on these streets. And I also concentrate my view on these, uh, the, the, let's say, paraphrased normal people who are not uh, part of the perpetrators, but they are also part of helping the perpetrators because they are, uh, it's about complicity. I mean, about being so passive and also, of course, uh, bigger parts of the population also uh, took part at the destroying and also took part at the pogrom. So also help helping, taking part at them, of course, make them uh, to, uh, to, to, to um, make them part of the group of the perpetrators. And uh, there's another scene, I show it later on, because it's also about the war afterwards. It's not taking place here in 1944 already, where Emina, she has a little son now. She, she is uh, evacuating Berlin, and you see the city and all the um, propaganda everywhere of the Nazis. Okay, I think this is it for now. This is a little sketch I also uh, want to show. This is maybe the start of when I'm starting to think about the scene and also about the dialogues we, uh, we spoke about. 
Um, maybe I, sh I, I stop here, Teile beenden. Okay. Yeah, the, the interesting, interesting thing for me is that uh, you both uh, found a, a very strong symbol for this, um, how should I say, uh, of this way how um, history was also treated after the war, the closed curtain. Yeah, uh, Both of your heroes or both of your um, uh, people who are plays a main role played a main role in your uh, comics are closing the curtain not to see something and this is also very interesting when you talk about comics because it's all always a decision about showing and not showing as you see uh, the, the the comic from Toby just brings out uh, just uh, displays a few uh, sketches and in these sketches and in between is the whole story. Uh, and this is really interesting. Um, time is running and we, we should go to uh, to the um, to the project you are working right now on, um, Barbara. And it's a very, very interesting project. It's not finished yet, but you uh, also allowed us to look into your work uh, today and this is really exciting maybe you can tell us something about the frame of it and then we have a discussion about uh, most of all contemporary witnesses mm -hmm. so i switch to the other one one moment okay so what you see here is I start at the beginning, and um, this is what I'm more or less working uh, working on right now. I'm a little bit uh, uh, proceeded in this project, but um, this is a very interesting project for me. It's about um, it's a biography about Emmy Abel, who is a, a Holocaust survivor. She lives in Israel. She's 83 years old, and I have also a picture of her here this is her and uh, i visited her in february and we had a lot of time to speak about her life and i well this uh this project started but uh, much earlier i it was two years ago that uh, charlotte Shali approached me she's a professor for holocaust studies and um um, human rights education in Canada and uh, she was so interested in graphic novels about historical topics and also very interested about um, asking the, the, the survivors who are still alive uh, for, for the life to bring it into graphic novels and she has three of us I have two colleagues one from Israel Gilad uh, Selikdar and one from Canada Israel uh, Miriam Lebitsky who also do uh, biographies of survivors um, three different survivors and I am now paired with the uh, wonderful Emmy Arbel and now I have very very long interviews and a lot of material, and we work in several steps. So um, I will do now a 30 pages, no, 35 pages short story, which will be combined with the two other stories in the end of the year for a first book, but we will also do longer books. So I'm now, since half a year, I would say, on this project. And I have a lot of text, of course. And what I, this, it's also about oral history here. So we have a lot of, uh, I, I have transcriptions now from the interviews and I, I collect the text and I start to do first scenes. Amy Abel, she's born 1937 and she, she's, she was 1942 when she uh, was deported um, with her family. She's from Den Haag, Holland, with her Jewish family, first to Westerbork, uh, to, the, to the concentration camp Westerbork, transition camp, and then to uh, the, the women's camp um, Ravensbrück in uh, Germany, um, and also in the end, 
shortly before the liberation, she was brought to Bergen-Belsen, so she survived three different um, concentration camps. And I will probably make a book about all her life, because this life is extraordinarily interesting. And um, now I can show a little bit of my uh, storyboards. And this is her, and I will lead you through this. I work with direct speech of her, direct quotes, and this is what she says. I don't remember. This is a picture which I drew. This is really there. It's 1942, before the deportation. She's a girl of five. When this picture was taken, but I remember when we were at the photo studio, I think that my dress was blue with white polka dots. And I look happy, don't I? Yes, I think I was in a good family. Please smile, young lady. Thank you. And now don't forget to put back the penguin to the others. I am born in Holland. I had parents and two brothers. Let's hurry home. Pa is coming home tonight. Yes, mommy. I don't remember. I have pictures of some events which happened to me, but I don't remember when and in which concentration camp they happened. I remember hundreds of people who were crammed in a long hut on, be on beds in several layers. I remember hunger, cold, beatings, a horrible toky train journey, and feelings of deep humiliation. Death was among us every day. This is showing the Ravensbrück concentration camp, but the memorial site of today, this is how it looks today. Um, it's only stones on the floor. And uh, of course, I visited it already several times. I have another part of it. Jakob, shall I, shall I show it now? Um, maybe you can on? show the next page if it's possible, yes. because uh, I oh, have yeah. a question on that. Yeah. Okay, then this is the following page. Knock, knock. Ah, there come Oli and Neria. Oli is her, one of her daughters. Hello, come in. I brought vegetables, Ima. Ima is mother, mom in Hebrew. Shalom, Grandma. Can I go to the computer? Let me open a window first and save my solitaire game. I had parents. Okay. What is he singing? Okay. Stop no, here. no, it's good. Yeah. It's good. He loves his sleeping. He stand. loves his sleeping stand. He sings to the computer like karaoke. He can do it all day. He's obsessed with it. That's nice. Ha <laughs> ha. This is a very harsh confrontation about uh, between uh, something which you can't uh, say in words: uh, a sadness and a cruelty uh, concerning all this uh, concentration camp setting and, and events uh, and everyday life. Um, this is one thing you do very regularly, uh, also in your other comics, because you also um, tell about yourself and about your position. This is something Toby uh, uh, does as well. Um, he hadn't showed it yet uh, uh, in, the, in this comic, but uh, both of you play a role in these historical comics. Why did you do that? Why did you decide to do that uh, certain move? Um, I thought about that quite long and um, I, I decided in the beginning I didn't want to show myself because I thought it's her story and her story is important, not my story. It's her story and I wanted to, to keep the space for her. But actually then I found out a lot of things were happening while our conversations and if I want to have to, to use these situations, these, these uh, atmospheres, then I need myself in. 
And because it's to, to, to do to do to to interview someone who is really there, that is not only telling his story, but it's also a conversation between us, of course. And it's um, so I decided to bring myself in for the moment. Maybe in a longer book, I don't need myself anymore. I will find that out. But this is a question I tackle all the time. Mm. Toby. Uh, yeah, it, my part in, in this story is, is also a very small one. It's, it's, I think it's, it's the, the thing that pulls the whole story together. Um, be, to to explain uh, to to explain my heritage, um, but also uh, approach the reader as well. That's that's something I, that uh, that's quite important to me to to inspire people to uh, to ask questions, to um, to to collect the family memories. So because. I was lucky that that my family kept all this this stuff um, and and that I can go through this now. But I don't know how how this will be uh, for, for our generation. We don't write letters anymore. We only write uh, apps. Uh, we have thousands of pictures. But what what are the people? And mm. I want with me bringing myself into this story. Uh, I hope, hope that people connect and identify themselves with it and, and ask questions that, that are maybe already in their minds mm. and uh, yeah, go on a go on a hunt themselves in a way. Mm. When we talk about contemporary witnesses in these cases, uh, these people witness uh, or suffered or experienced uh, very much. Um, Yeah, grief and suffering. Um, how do you how do you deal with that? You you both work with contemporary contemporary witnesses, with uh, time witnesses, and uh, you you're forced to to transfer it into pictures. Uh, how, maybe you can talk a little about the difficulties uh, in doing that, or the the also the the borders where yeah. Barbara, yes. Yes, I, 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 I have to think a little bit about that. So, Toby, if you, if you have an answer now, it's yeah, it, it is always difficult because, in a way, you, 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 uh, the, as soon as you, you put uh, a character into a drawing, they become uh, some sort of, uh, at least in my story, some a bit artificial in a way. I try to make it as real as possible, but um, because there are so many people in the in the story, and um, the reader has to has to be be able to, to be, divide be, between them, that which is difficult sometimes because all the old people or people of 50 years old would wear the hair the hair the same way at that time, so. Um, But um, the only th the only thing that I that I try to do is is uh, stick to my material, and then. Um, but I also want to tell a story, and for that I have to make steps away from the material so that otherwise, yeah, we mentioned this uh, earlier. The impact of bombings on a city. The, I can only draw this one, two, three times, but the impact was that it would happen in some cities every day. You can't draw this, and you, so you have to you have to make uh, you have to find ways to find metaphors for that, and that is also uh, that also goes for the characters characterization of of uh, the protagonists. Shall I continue? Yeah, um, and, and you can also uh, you, you also prepared another pass, uh, another sequence. Yes, yes, maybe may, we maybe can, I can do show. it together. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I got mentioned. So 
this is uh, some pages afterwards. Let's go inside. And we are speaking and always on the black boxes you see uh, Emmy's direct voice. Every morning. I, I don't see it. Is it, is it online? Yes. Okay, because I don't see it, but... Uh, okay. Don't worry. Sorry, sorry. Yes, no. I think now you see it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Apologies, yes. Every morning, I wake up around five or six. When I get up, I'm eating my yogurt. I rarely sleep more than three hours per night. And I think if she could take only one bite... Maybe I had parents. Mommy. She was not in a bed. She was lying on the floor and Rudy and me, we sat near her. And we knew that she is dying. Ima. Mommy. Ima. I had parents. Maybe Ima, she would have survived because I know that she gave all what she had to eat to me. Ima, shall I bring you some fruits from the outside until she was gone? And I don't know how long it was, maybe hours, maybe short, I don't know. I don't remember. Ima, it's me. I had parents. Ima, are you okay? Hi, Michal. Michal is her other daughter. How are you doing? Hmm. Hmm. I'm okay. My back gives me trouble. And my ear. Go see a doctor, Ima. Maybe tomorrow. I'm okay. I stop it here. Thank you so much. Um, I still have to say it again uh, that, that this is not the final version. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's it's already so moving and so so brilliant in the in the construction. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, we are in the fifty fifth minute of our talk. Time is uh, running. I don't know if there are any questions. There, they, okay, there are not. But uh, uh, maybe that's a sign that everybody is so fascinated by what are you uh, telling us. Um, when did you, the both of you, realize that comics uh, uh, can deal with serious topics in a very good and in a very uh, also serious way? What was your inspiration for making comics with about such, uh, yes, uh, uh, deep and, and, and serious themes? Are there any uh, idols you have or any, any moments where you said, oh, this is really gorgeous, uh, I have to do it by myself, or not the same, but uh, doing a comic about such things? I, I think Toby will agree that uh, most, uh, um, the, the most important work for, for this is Mouth by Art Spiegelman. This is the Definitely, basis yeah. of everything, which was uh, absolutely uh, impressive to read it. And I absolutely recommend it to everyone to read it. Um, yeah, that's the book. Thank you, Jakob. And um, I think I, when I came to comics, I, when, I, when I discovered comics, I was also already a, an adult when I was 20. So I, I was finding out, I was reading almost only these kind of serious graphic novels. So, um, but I, I brought some, which I would also recommend about this topic. Toby, is it okay if I, if I yeah, continue directly? Go so. Ahead. But I think it's really, it's really also very important and uh, and a uh, heart moving and uh, eye opening um, um, great book by by the Israeli co the colleague Michel Kishka, second generation, um, 
um, I would recommend this and also I found this in my shelf. I, I wasn't impressed so much from the first moment, but I kept it in mind long years actually. This is uh, uh, Emmanuel Guibert, Alan Swore. And he, I love it. Is, it. Yeah. Yeah. While yes. this is about about uh, a, a survivor um, uh, told by his son, this is uh, uh, about an uh, American soldier who came to uh, Germany to to fight there and his memories and and it's it's also it's also really a, a more I think more quiet story. Toby, what would what would yeah. you say? Yeah, it's, it's a unique it's, book. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's based of, on, on this conversation and it, it, there, there are no, uh, almost no, uh, yeah, if you want to say it like that, action sequences in this whole story. It's it's really, really quiet, like you say, but the, the artwork is so beautiful and you're really there. It's, yes, it's very authentic. Uh, yeah. And um, I also brought this because uh, uh, also parts of Amina were, took part in this exhibition and they have a splendid catalogue, Shoah et Bon Dessiné, that was an exhibition done by the Shoah Memorial in Paris. And I think this is a very good collection about comics on Holocaust and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So maybe. Oh. Toby, it's up to you. Um, I have, um, yeah, I have the problem that most of my uh, books are at my studio, but I have some here that I really like. And the first one is is Heimat from Noah Krug. Uh, this this is uh, a personal um, search for, for for her grandfather, uh, for the story of her family as well. And she travel she she lives in New York and she travels to um, to Germany and does research there. And this whole story of the research is there as well as the stories, so stories that she found about her family. And that's uh, beautiful artwork with, with a lot of collages, but um, I was quite impressed by that. And um, then a book maybe for the younger ones, but for, uh, for grown-ups as well. I only have the Dutch version, but it's in, available in every country, I guess. Yeah, that one. Uh, it is brilliant. It is. It has a. It's not as cruel, uh, to, cruelly told as the war was, but it, it's it's a brilliant way for for uh, for for youngsters to to uh, get the scale of the war, and it's it's very impressive. It's to, um, the first two of four book series. There's also one before that you should also read. Highly recommend it. It's really great. And then a last one, because I like big books, is, um, is Berlin. Oh, yes. Um, that's, Absolutely. that's a brilliant story. The uh, Jason Lutz um, worked 20 years on this. And uh, I hope... I'm, I'm going to be a bit quicker with my, with my book, but there's a lot of research. You see, you see that on every page, and it's quite uh, uh, educational to see uh, how Germany got into this mess, what led to World War III and, and the, the upcoming of the Nazi Party. So that would be my recommendations. Thank you so much. Um, let let me add one book, uh, and it's uh, uh, good that you mentioned Jason Lutz Berlin because Berlin uh, doesn't uh, take place in the uh, after 1930. It stops with 1933, but of course it's very closely linked. And so I can also recommend uh, Juncker oh, yeah. from uh, oh, yeah. Simon Freud, and he this uh, plays in the First World War. But uh, as you will see in Toby's book as well. Um, you can't uh, divide that. It's it's important to see the context of of all these uh, events: the First World War, the Second World War, the Weimar Edu Republic. Yeah. Education as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's that's important. Can, um, can I can I add one one website which I really I think it's really good. It's uh, called Redrawing the Past. Is a uh, that was a workshop, and I think it has two or three parts. In the, in the meantime, it's uh, um, published by Kush Comics, 
And uh, but it's I think mo several works are online also to see, and uh, they are uh, several uh, uh, international comics artists who um, um, made stories about witness uh, stories from f victim stories uh, from the uh, uh, Holocaust. So I think this is this is very interesting because it's showing a lot of different uh, ways to to tell it. We draw the past. We draw the past. We draw the past. So let me finish this conversation with a question to to the both of you. Uh, you doing a comic is very uh, exhausting. It it takes a very long time. I don't know. Uh, Toby is uh, not sure, not absolutely sure when his comic will be published. He already knows that it will be two volumes or. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. The publisher has a saying in this, but I want to tell a story up till the end of the war, and then another mm. volume okay. about what happened afterwards. It it doesn't stop uh, at 1945. In nope. in all these times when you sit on the table and work on that, or maybe uh, shortly after and before fell asleep, what what is the Uh, the reader you, you're dreaming of? What is the reader for your comic? Good question. Um, I think everybody who can relate to this, but that should be everyone. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think I'm aiming, I have this little educational thing in it um, that to put it all to, to, to explain Uh, how the war went uh, with the example of my family and the, the impacts of that. So, um, but uh, of course, people of my age can read it as well. It depends. Yeah, I'm not so focused on one, of one group. I also I I would I I I wouldn't say I have a target group to for, for to to for whom I write or draw so i write i draw about things i i am interested in i want to find out about um it's for me not a pedagog pedagogical uh, mission it's more something i really i i want to find out myself and i want to find out how i can show that by drawings mm -hmm. and and i think going deeper in the research going deeper into the stories is uh Uh, increases that all the time. So um, really, to say, I, 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 I am, I'm drawing because I am researching because I want to know. I want to learn. We have to. Uh, a dear colleague of us said once uh, that kept me kept me drawing. Actually, that that quote that he said. He said, in the end, uh, nobody is spending more time with your book than you you yourself. So you. <laughs> It should mainly mainly be for yourself. So yeah. uh, and then hopefully somebody else likes it as well. <laughs> Let me get back to the to the slogan to the motto of this uh, histocon and it's look back, think ahead. And I think uh, this is a, a, a motto you you really meet with your great uh, piece of art. And thank you so much for doing that and thank you so much for having this conversation with us. And thank also uh, Histocon and the Bundeszentrale for Politische Bildung to make it happen. Uh, uh, although there is Corona and this stuff uh, and thank to the audience for, for having us and, and watching us and um, yeah, explore comics. That's the message we also have. Goodbye. Thank you. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>